Hey everyone, hi. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, this bookish place. Um, so what am I going to be doing today? Today I am going to be going over the New York Times 24 works of fiction to read this summer. I am imagining that this will be a three-part series. <laughs> we'll see if it all comes to fruition on this channel, but I want to do the 24 works of fiction to read this summer and then I want to do the opposite of it, the not the not the 24 works of fiction not to read this summer, but rather the 20 the I think 14 some arbitrary number of nonfiction to read this summer according to the New York Times. And then I want to throw my list into the ring, the works of fiction and nonfiction that I think are perfect for summer reads. So um, this is the fiction version of that. If you are new to my channel, then hi, welcome. I'm Shelly. I have a huge passion for books and reading of all kinds. And I like to look at lists. I'm a very listy person. And so um, every once in a while I dive into a list like this. I particularly have a, an affinity with the New York Times probably because I pay for the subscription um, to um, look at these lists and, and all of that. So anyways, um, if you also like books and reading and you find yourself enjoying this video, I would encourage you to subscribe, stick around. It really means a lot to me and my channel. Um, and without any further rambling on, let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. All right, I am going to, I haven't really previewed this list too much. So you and I are going to be re, we're going to be reacting to it together. I'm actually gonna scooch over so I can put the books right over here um, and give it, give it a tiny bit of room. I have my laptop right down here. So if I'm looking down, that's what I'm looking at. I started to preview these books, you know, a, a little bit. And then I decided I'm just gonna react in real time with you all. So I'm looking at this and perhaps this is the first time you are seeing this. Oh, also, can you tell me if there is a book you're interested in, you know, leave it in the comments down below. I'm always, you know, I can really get swept away with the new book fever and I try and stay, <laughs> I try and stay level headed when I look at these lists. And if something intrigues me, sometimes I try and reroute that, you know, um, that excitement back into my own collection. Cause often I'll have a book. Oh, we have a visitor. We have Harry here. Um, oftentimes I'll have a book that sounds exactly like the one I'm excited about um, because, you know, I'm, I'm a creature of habit um, and there's nothing new under the sun. So anyways, I'm just reacting with you all in real time. So the first book is All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Cosby. So a year into Titus Crown's term as sheriff of Sharon Valley, Virginia, a school shooting leads to an investigation into a cult that has quietly operated in the area for years, killing and torturing black children. Oh, well, after reviewing harrowing video footage of the cult's activities, Titus sets out to find the group's masked leader. Um, well, I don't, as a mother and at this stage in my life, I'm not really into Ch children tormenting like scenes of ch child torture I didn't know <laughs> I'm just oh uh, no so I'm gonna pass on that but I feel like tell me are, are there fans of are there S.A. Cosby fans out there please tell me about his or her or their right you know just let me about the let me know about the author I'm curious because I feel like I've heard that name floating around and I don't know anything about the author or whether their books are good. I have no idea. Okay, the next book, which I like the the cover, okay? <laughs> Sometimes the cover gets me, like the eye and the... This is a, a book cover I would love to recreate. I hear you all. I know. I see you all. I hear you all. I know you all want to see book cover recreations. And um, I just know that I see you. And I don't know, but there's just been like a little bit of a block in my creativity in terms of book cover recreations. So maybe I'll jump back in with this one, even though it's kind of a it's kind of a boring cover, but I like it. I like it. So it's called Keros by Jenny Epperbeck. Never heard of the author before. And it says, after the death of her former lover, a woman receives two cardboard boxes full of his possessions, prompting her to relive their relationship. It began when she was 19 and he was 53. So a bit of a scandal, you know, like in today's day and age, I'm not, I am not against what is what May December romances, I think they're called large age gaps, you know, like, 
I'm not against them, but they always kind of uh, invite a lot of judgment. Um, so uh, it began her though this romance began in 19 when she was 19 and he her lover was 53 in the 1980s Berlin on the precipice of a seismic change. So we talking about like, I'm guessing maybe the, the Berlin Wall coming down because I think that happened in the 1980s, a novel which was translated by Michael Hoffman. Um, this is her sixth re being released into the English market. Okay, interesting. Okay, so this is a, a translated book. It's, um, it is being done by New Directions. The publish, it's being published, it's being done by, it's being published by New Directions. It's supposed to come out on June 6th. If I miss any, um, if I miss any publishing information, just know that about the dates that things are supposed to be released and by which publisher. I'm going to leave that all in the show notes down below, just so you know that. All right, next up we have Loot by Tania. Oh wait, I guess I should say whether I'm interested in this or not. Um, <laughs> let's think, I don't know if I'm interested. I like that Jenny Erpenbeck is, at Erpenbeck is a, um, I like that this is a translated novel. I like the idea of a woman having to confront her past through bloggings. Um, but I don't, I just don't know. I'm going to have to learn more, although I do find it like intriguing in some way, this book. The next book is Loot by Tania James. Apparently this is uh, James's third novel. It's set in 18th century India and France. A teenage artisan named Abbas is recruited by the ruler of Mysore in southern India to a princess with a French clockmaker who is building an ottoman of a tiger attacking a British soldier. Years later, after Myr Sor falls to the British, Abbas must steal back the artifact from the country estate. Okay, well you all know that I tend to, I do like books about art, though I wonder like, I don't know, I feel like I was really I was really trying, I was like in it. <laughs> I've done a whole bunch of videos about like book covers that I love and hate or love and dislike. I think hate is a very strong word. I have done my thoughts about the way books approach art and sometimes I like it and sometimes I can kind of get burned out on it. So I don't know if I'm just cycling into a phase in which I'm like any book about art I'm just not interested in reading for which I feel loot would fall under. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll we'll just see. This is being published by Knopf and it's coming out on June 13th. Now this book, okay, I did read the title of this book and I immediately thought it was something different than what it was. So it is called I Am Homeless If This Is Not My Home by Lori Moore. So Moore, this book by Lori Moore, I've never read anything by her. And, um, and I just thought that it would be like a refugee novel. I don't know why that's on my brain. Um, but I thought perhaps it would be something about like, you know, the Syrian refugee crisis or uh, something along those lines because I feel like books that are dealing with um, refugee crises around the world and in history have been coming to the forefront of fiction and nonfiction lately. So that's what I thought it was about, but it's not. It says when Finn, who's a bit of a conspiracy theorist, learns that his ex-girlfriend Lily has died, he does the only logical thing under the circumstances. He picks up her reanimated body at this, he picks up her reanimated body. I'm like, did I read that right? At the cemetery where she was buried and they embark on a cross country road trip. Okay, this is also being published by Knopf and it's coming out on June 20th, but whoo, that wasn't exactly <laughs> what I thought the book was gonna be about. Far cry from any type of refugee crises. I mean, it could be still in the book, who knows, but I'm not gonna, um, you know, not what I thought, okay? Next up is Watch Us Dance by Lila Slimani. Um, this is a second, the second installment in a planned trilogy. So has anybody read Slimani's first book? So the first book is called In the Country of Others. So this is a new novel, it's a translated novel set in 1968 Morocco. And it follow it follows anime and Math Mathilde as they grow older and their children are coming of age. I don't know this author. Should I 
like do y'all am I like missing something I remember in the last video I did this version of the version of this video that you're watching but for spring and I was like who is Abraham Abraham Vergesse I don't know who that is <laughs> like I was going off on it and then a whole bunch of y'all were like Abraham Vergesse wrote a really popular book about a decade ago and it was really good and it was like a, a you know the hit success of the year that nobody had expected the unexpected hit success of the year and I was like oh <laughs> I had no idea um so maybe I have maybe that's Slimani's maybe Slimani is the same way maybe she's popular and I just don't know I'm not in the know please let me know if you know okay that's a lot of no's in the last 10 seconds. Murder Mystery Lovers Unite. This next book is called Killing Lee by Katherine Butner. Um, and this is what it's about. So when Bertha, the quietest student at Mount Holyoke, disappears in 1897, a real life unsolved mystery, her sister and best friend and best friend are asked to help identify why she might have vanished. It becomes clear that the people closest to Bertha have their own motives for wanting her gone. This is by Soho Crime. This is being put out by Soho Crime and it's coming out on June 6th. The only, I have to, I really have to, I really have to see the approach and reviews about this book. So I read Alias Grace by Margaret Atwood. And it is about a true account of Grace Marks who may or may not have been involved in a murder. And the ending is very ambiguous. And I think that those, the readers who went into the book knowing that Margaret Atwood doesn't give you firm answers in this historical fiction piece, primarily because there are no real answers about Grace Marks um, and nobody really knows the, to what extent she was involved in the murders that she was accused of being involved in. And so, you know, Margaret Atwood is just telling you a tale, leaving it very ambiguous to you readers or us readers. I didn't know that going in. I thought we were going to get like this satisfying, juicy, delicious ending. And that really shaped my experience with the book. And if I had known that it was going to be ambiguous, I think I would have had a very different mindset of what I was going to get out of the book by the end. And so considering that this is based on a real life unsolved mystery, I wonder if Butner, the author, is going to go down the Margaret Atwood route and only leave more questions than answers and leave it very ambiguous for the readers. Um, or if we're going to get a very satisfying ending uh, with one where Butner fills in the pieces of the unsolvedness of the mystery, which I think is more satisfying for me. So, um, you know, since we're all just writing for me here, like that's what I want to see from something like Killingly. Um, but I guess we'll just see. So I'm going to be awaiting reviews on that one. Talk about book covers that are serving me nothing. <laughs> this is one of them. The Quiet Tenant by Clements McGallion. This is just like a barn or the side of a house with a light on. I just was like, this is one of those books that I would just, if I was at Barnes & Noble, I would just glaze right over it and just be like, ugh, no. Okay, so book cover aside, Aiden Thomas has worked hard to cultivate a reputation as a good man in his small Hudson Valley community. No one there knows he is a serial killer holding yet another woman captive in a shed. Okay, so it's probably a shed on the book cover where she's been for years. She's been in this shed for years. Oh my gosh, narrated by the three women in Aiden's life, his daughter, his prisoner, and his girlfriend. This thriller looks at the tension between his public and private selves. What well, sounds like a, tw a twist on a the serial killer and the three voices narrating, narrating the story sounds interesting. Hmm, <laughs> I'm intrigued. Okay, I'm intrigued, I'm intrigued. This is gonna be put out by Knopp and it's coming out on June 20th. Another book cover that I quite like actually, and it's called Nothing Special and it's by Nicole Flattery. And this is what it is about. A disaffected and adrift teenager, May, becomes a transcriber for Andy Warhol as the artist records the factory's happenings as source material for a novel. Along, her, along with her secretary, Shelley, May grapples with vanity, commodification, and fame. Mm, I don't know. <sighs> I just, 
this, uh, I want to say, mm, I'm just going to say no. There's something that really like anti buzzwords are coming up. Vanity, commodification, and fame. I, mm, <laughs> I don't know. There's just something about that. I've read a couple of books that deal with fame and the struggles of being famous. I think that the proliferation of like many celebrities that have come about because of YouTube, you know, people who make it in certain spaces quite well or have gigantic channels and then they talk about like how hard it is to be famous. I just have little patience for that now. So I'm gonna say this is a pass for me as much as I quite enjoy the cover. It's a very summery cover, but mm, no. Although Andy Warhol being a character seems intriguing, um, especially since I've heard or the way he's portrayed in, in movies and such is that he's quite eccentric. Um, but yeah, this is being put out by Bloomsbury on July 11th. All right, we, we have another weirdly dark cover for summer. I would have thought summer would be all like yellows and pinks and bright lime greens, but no, no, no. So we have The Vegan by Andrew Lipstein, and it is about um, Herschel Cain, a hedge fund manager on the brink of unparalleled wealth um, while being overwhelmed by guilt. So he has this technology that's going to be disrupting the, the stock market and his his tech, his um, partners don't seem to care and he confides in animals um, including the neighbor's dog and so then he ends up going vegan and it sets up this is the setup of a darkly funny morality play which I I don't know I feel like the I feel like either the copy was poorly written and it's not getting me interested in this book or this book is like un is like overly complicated and so it's hard to describe Either way, it's not making me interested in the book. So this is by this is being put out by Farrar, Strauss, and Giro, and it comes out on July 11th. Next up, we have Colson Whitehead's new book, and it's called Crook Manifesto. It is going to be the follow-up of the Harlem Shuffle, which came out back in 2021. And I'm going to say, all right, I don't care what it's about because Colson Whitehead is not for me. I've read two of his books, both of his Pulitzer Prize winning novels. I could see what he's doing. Whatever he is doing, he is doing incredible incredibly well but the writing is like he's too good at what he does he's too good at his craft and he freaks me out every time I read his stuff it like gives me nightmares for days and so as much as I wish he was for me I know he's not so I'm gonna pass on the book okay an author that I do rec I do recognize and it is um Sylvia Moreno Garcia who wrote I believe Mexican Gothic I haven't read her but I know that that book had a moment last year or a couple years ago. Her new book is called Silver Nitrate and it's set in the 1990s in Mexico City. It's about a sound editor pining for her longtime friend Tristan who is a soap star but his career is on the decline. Um, and then Tristan's neighbor, they, the, the main character and the neighbor discover an unfinished film written by a Nazi occultist and then the question is but will finishing the film end the spell, so maybe the decline of Tristan's career, or open a P Pandora's box of horrors? So it sounds like a horror novel, which I'm not about. <laughs> I always think maybe they're for me, and maybe they are. Maybe I should read it for Garb August, because I'm hosting, I'm co-hosting along with about a billion other people, Garb August this year, in which we celebrate reading trash, although I don't believe that there's anything I mean, you know, I, I have like mixed feelings about calling anything trash. I don't want anyone to feel bad about their reading. But may, I've, maybe I'll read horror this August. Would you all want to see that? Do I want to do that? I don't know. I mean, usually I'm a scary cat, but see, I read like horror adjacent things and I tend to get really sucked in. Or I just really don't like it because I don't buy in. Like I've read some Stephen King and I'm like, mm, not for me. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. <laughs> Would you all want to see me? try and read different horror genres to see if that is a genre for me. Let me know. Okay, the next book I've actually seen talked about on Charlie Brooke Reed's channel. Um, she was raving about this book and it's called Small World. I believe she was raving about it. Correct me in the comments below, Charlie, if you, you know, if you didn't. It's called Small Worlds by Caleb Azuma Nelson. So in this love story, the principal relationship is between the British Ghanaian musicians 
Stephen and Dell, but Stephen's love for his brother and for his music also drives his coming of age. Spanning continents and summers, this novel explores race, inheritance, and migration. And my phone just went off. But I've heard, I know that Char, this, yeah, I'm almost, I'm like 90% sure that Charlie was raving about this on her channel because she was saying that every section is a summer in the lives of the main characters and you're like checking in with them. I believe it's broken up in three parts and she said it was amazing and actually not a super long read. So I'm interested in this, but mostly because of Charlie and not because of the copy that is written here. This is being put out by Grove Press and it's coming um, on July 18th. I really love the colors in this next cover. It's called Vanishing Maps by Christina Garcia. So this is a sequel to Garcia's acclaimed novel, Dreaming in Cuba, which I haven't read. If you all read it, will you let me know? I'm asking a lot from you today. I'm like, help, <laughs> do I even read? Do I even keep up with the book market? But anyways, it um, revisits the Del Pino family some 20 years later. So I already know, I'm not gonna, read too much I'm not gonna read any more because I already know that if it's going to be a sequel I am gonna have to read the first book first so I'm gonna obviously pass on this but the cover is intriguing me and depending on what you all say in the comments about dreaming in Cuba maybe it's maybe it will be a read for me all right next up we have something by an author that I've actually read before and it's a uh, family lore by Elizabeth Acevedo so I read her acclaimed novel the poet X and it was a beautiful incredible Incredible, lovely novel that I really really enjoyed it's a YA novel told in verse but really effective I remember I was reading it and then all of a sudden I started like crying and Ted looks up and he just wasn't going to he wasn't expecting me to to cry like be like on the verge of tears and he was like whoa what are you reading and I was like I'm just reading this beautiful story um, and so that's my experience with Acevedo. So the story, this new story, Family Lore, follows the Marte sisters after one of them, Flor, who can predict deaths to the day, asks everyone to participate in a living wake for herself. In the days before the gathering, the entire, the entire family's secrets rise to the surface. This is being put out by Echo Press and it's coming out on August 1st. I'm a little bit intrigued. I know she's put out books in between The Poet X and you know, um, her, this book, Family Lore, like there's books in between that she's put out and I haven't read them, but you know, it's always good to see an author that I've had a great experience with put out something new. Another summary book with all these like rainbow colors and it's called Time's Mouth by Eden Lepuki. Lepuki. So this is a multi-generational tale around the 1950s cult leader named Ursula who flees Connecticut as a teenager after discovering she can travel back in time. So we either have, I think we have this we have a bit of a magical realist element in this. I don't know. She lands in California where she sets up a only woman, a woman only rather, well, only woman, no, woman only commune, but her abilities alter the lives of her family, including her son Ray and her granddaughter Opal. I don't know what to think of this. Has anybody read anything by her? This is being, my, ear, my earring is assaulting me. This is um, <laughs> being put out by CounterPoint on August 1st. A name again that I know and have read before and I love the cover. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. It's called Tom Lake by Ann Patchett. Y'all, I have no business buying an Ann Patchett book. I have so many of her books unread on my shelves. I think I have four or five. She is one of the most She's the author that I own the most from that is also unread. I mean, it just, it is embarrassing at this point, but she is coming out with a new book and it's called Tom Lake. And it's this, with their lives paused during the early days of the pandemic, Lara's daughter, daughters return home to the family orchard in Michigan to help harvest cherries. Mm. I grew up in a place that produced a lot of cherries. So that kind of t tickles my heartstrings. They ask Lara to tell them about her summer romance with the now famous actor at a theater company, prompting reflections about their own desires and secrets. This sounds good. It's probably because I already have an affinity towards Ann Patchett. I read Bel Canto and thought it was great. But you know what? If I want to read an Ann Patchett book, I have plenty of books to choose from on my own shelves. 
This is being put out by Harper and it's coming out on August 1st. Jamal Brinkley is putting out a short story collection. I don't know this author, but it's called Witness and Short Stories. So it's Witness colon stories. <laughs> And this is about characters in New York who have to decide whether to speak up, take action, or remain silent bystanders in everyday situations with lasting consequences. Um, you know, I'm just not the biggest short story reader. I have a couple of short story collections on my shelves and I never want to pick them up. But, you know, maybe this is your thing. This is being put out by Farrar Strauss and Giro on August 1st. The copy is getting a little sparse over here as we get in, we're getting down to the end of the list. So the next book is called Bridge by Laura and Buquez. So this is what it says. It's about while emptying her mother's house, Bridget finds a dream worm, an object that allows her to visit all the possible versions of her life, including those where her mother might still be alive. This sounds strange. What is it with, what is it with, um, you know, magical realism this summer. I feel like there's a lot of magical realist books coming out. This is being put out by M Mulholland and it comes out on August 8th. Oh, another familiar name to me, though I haven't read anything by him, is James McBride is coming out with a new book and it's coming out this summer and it's called The Heaven and Earth Grocery Store. So this is from the author um, of Deacon King Kong. And it is the story of Chicken Hill, a community in Pennsylvania where black and Jewish residents live side by side. Moshe runs an integrated theater company while his wife, Hannah, heads up the Heaven and Earth grocery store. Led by a black janitor at Moshe's theater, the town comes together to protect a deaf boy from institutionalization. Mm, sounds good. I think I own James McBride's, um, his memoir. So this is being put out by River... So if I want to read something by James McBride, I actually will just pick up his memoir. But this is being put out by Riverhead and comes out on August 8th. Gosh, another great book cover. This is beautiful. I would like hang this book cover up on my guest room wall. You know, I just... Oh, this is pretty. So it's called La Las Madres and it's by es Esmeralda Santiago. So in 1975, a car accident in Puerto Rico kills... kills loses parents and permanent, permanently injures her brain. Her new friends, Ada and Shirley, Las Madres, help pick up the pieces. Hmm, this sounds really interesting. All right, hmm. So this is being put out by Knopf and it comes out on August 8th. Maybe it sounds interesting because the book cover is beautiful. Beautiful, and I'm like, it would be a piece of art in my house, okay? Another anti-buzzword um, we're getting from this next book and it's called Sun House by David James Duncan. This novel of ideas, mm, now, <laughs> I just, a novel of ideas, I just, I don't want that. I want a story, y'all. I don't want a novel of ideas, which took Duncan 16 years to complete, follows all manner of people who are starting, who are staring down crises of faith. These lost souls from cowboys to ur urban refugees make their way to Montana and build new communities for themselves. This is being put out by Little Brown on August 8th. So, you know, I don't know. I just, a novel of ideas. I just, no, it's not, I don't know. It's just really kind of like, stay away, <laughs> you know? Next up, we have a bee book, very summary, The Bee Sting by Paul Murray. The Barnes family is headed for crisis. Dickie's car dealership is floundering. His kids are acting out and his wife, Imelda, is miserable. Could their fortune stem from a freak accident on Dickie, Dickie and Imelda's wedding day when a bee got caught under her veil? So interesting. I doesn't tell me much about anything, but I like that it feels summery because there's a bee on the cover and it's being put out by Farrar, Strauss, and Giro on August 16th. I feel like I don't know any of these authors. I know that's not true, but that's just how I feel. So this next one is Happiness Falls by Angie Kim. And this is how the copy starts. Kim, who won acclaim for her debut novel, Miracle Creek. Did I miss that? Do, should I know about this book? Tell me. So. This new book follows a Korean American family in Virginia grappling with a crisis. Isn't that how all of these copies start? Everyone's in a crisis. When a teenager named Eugene, who has a rare genetic condition that prevents him from speaking, comes home 
from a walk covered in blood and without his father. The family must investigate the disappearance and find a way for Eugene to reveal what happened. I mean, can he write? Like, can he, can he write out what happened? I don't know. Okay, I'm just, hmm, I don't know. It's being put out by Hogarth Press and it comes out on August 29th. And then our final book is an Isabel Cañas, Cañas. This is another one, like, I have heard about her books, but I haven't read it. Um, I haven't read any. So she is known for The Hacienda, which is a gothic novel that was really popular again like a year or a year to a year and a half ago and her new book is vampires of el norte so this is a return to the gothic romance it's set in 1846 when two childhood friends nena and nestor cross paths cross paths at the start of the mexican-american war she's a healer and he's a vaquero who both are still he still healing from a vampire attack when they were teenagers. Now they must take up the mantle as unlikely vampire hunters. Okay, that just sounds fun. That sounds like a lot of fun. Like I want to read this because this sounds like a good time. <laughs> maybe that's what I'm, maybe that's what I'm itching for. Like uh, just like a good fun time. Mm -hmm. Although I am reading Lonesome Dove right now and it's been a really, it's been fun. Like it's been fun to read that. So this is coming out, this is coming, this is being put out by Berkeley and it's coming, Berkeley Press or Berkeley Publishing House and it's coming out on August 29th. I'm going to keep my eye out for that. Um, yeah, I would say like of the books, um, this last one is really catching my attention, Vampires of El Norte. And then the only other one, well, of course, the Ann Patchett book, it's just reminding me that I want to read Ann Patchett. And then the only other one that I think is really catching my attention is Small Worlds, but it's because it was already reviewed by someone here on BookTube and she loved it. And, um, and so I'm like intrigued because she wasn't, she was, she got me intrigued by it or, you know, she intrigued me with her comments about it. And that, you know, Charlie, Charlie Brooks Reed, who I'll leave linked down below. She's amazing. But um, yeah, so that's it for me. Let me know what caught your attention. I feel like I'm, you know, not being swept up by the, by the hype of this list. Although it was neat to see who's coming out with the second novel, new names to me. It's always good to keep abreast of the new book market. And I like doing it through the New York Times, um, among other, you know, other venues like BookTube. Y'all keep me informed about what's going on. And I do keep up with other lists, but I do like this this outlet in particular. Okay, that's it for me. I'm just rambling on. That's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all in my next one. Bye.